that immunization or providing vaccinations to children is one of the most effective measures to prevent infections. In fact, this has been the backbone strategy for preventing some diseases like, you know, smallpox and even poliomyelitis. In the year 2011, India recorded the last case of the what we call as wild type of poliomyelitis and in the year 2014, India was officially declared free of poliomyelitis which is a big milestone and this was only possible because of uh, stringent meticulous pediatric vaccination. So today in this video we are going to discuss about some of the important vaccines that you need to administer your child and because there are a lot of vaccinations you know um, available now for a number of diseases we are only going to restrict ourselves in this video to vaccinations that are administered to children less than one year of age so let me begin with the birth vaccinations so there are, there are three important vaccinations that every newborn baby must get at the time of birth one is bcg this is the vaccine given for preventing tuberculosis the second one is oral polio vaccine or opv drops and the third one is a hepatitis B vaccination. Now BCG is a very unique vaccine because it's, it's a live bacterial vaccine. So you have two types of vaccination. Some of them are killed products from the, the bacteria or the virus that is responsible for the disease. And some of them are derived from the live bacterial or viral products. So we have quite a few live viral vaccines, but BCG is one of the uh, relatively rare live bacterial vaccines. So you all know that India is uh, a country which has one of the biggest loads of tuberculosis in the entire world and tuberculosis can affect a number of um, organs like the lungs, the skin, the lymph nodes, the intestines, the kidneys, the fallopian tubes in women leading to infertility and a lot of other problems. In children, tuberculosis can cause poor growth, chronic fever, chronic cough and uh, reduction in appetite. The BCG vaccine is also unique in being uh, administered intradermally which is into the skin and it causes a small bleb which parents often notice a couple of weeks after the vaccine is administered and it may sometimes take up to three months for the BCG uh, papule or reaction to kind of subside and leave a small dry scar tissue which most of us can still notice in the left upper arm. The other vaccines that are given when the baby is born is the oral polio drops and the, the hepatitis B vaccine. Now oral polio drops you all know is to prevent poliomyelitis. Now this is one of the you know age old vaccinations which we have been seeing in TV advertisements, in government campaigns and the government also goes around giving the pulse polio vaccination days where mass vaccination against poliomyelitis is done for all children less than 5 years of age. Now, um, the oral polio vaccine, interestingly, is a live viral vaccination and in phases, every government, every nation is trying to do away with the live form of the oral polio vaccine and is steadily moving towards the injectable polio vaccine. So you would have found that, you know, as children, we all got a greater number of oral polio vaccine doses, but now our kids are getting only a couple of doses and most of the other polio doses are given as combinations in the injections along with diphtheria, pertussis, pertussis and tetanus. So we have the injectable form of polio which is being now uh, more and more kind of popularized. The reasons behind this are that, you know, when um, a country becomes polio free, the, the vaccine itself can sometimes be responsible for uh, a rare form of what we call as vaccine derived poliomyelitis. Uh, and this is, uh, although it's extremely rare, you know, 1-3 million doses, still because of the small theoretical risk of vaccine derived poliomyelitis, the, the only role of polio oral vaccine comes for promoting the herd immunity, which means for promoting immunity at a community level. Uh, nevertheless, the birth dose of oral polio vaccine still remains on the vaccination schedule and this is something every newborn baby must get before leaving the hospital. And similarly, the hepatitis B vaccine is given for preventing infective viral hepatitis. The first, do first dose is given intramuscularly in the thigh, in the lateral aspect of the thigh. And uh, this again is a mandatory vaccine and most schedules uh, insist that this vaccine should be given within 24 hours of the birth of the baby. So you must have got three vaccines before you leave the hospital after the baby is born. That is BCG for tuberculosis, the oral polio drops and the inject injection hepatitis B, which is an IM injection in the thigh. 
Now, once the baby reaches six weeks, there is a whole list of vaccines that is to be given. Now, the most important among these is the diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus combination vaccination, which is now available as a hexavalent vaccination, which means there are total of six conditions which are incorporated in the same injection. So, along with the DPT, the diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus, the, there is also injectable inactivated polio virus, which I was just discussing about. And we also have the Haemophilus influenza B or the H influenza B, which prevents uh, the bacterial flu and we also have hepatitis B incorporated in the whole combination. So all these six uh, disease preventive components are incorporated into the same shot so that the child has only one injection. So this is typically repeated as per the Indian Academy of Pediatrics uh, guideline which has come up recently. This hexavalent shot can be given three times which is at six weeks, ten weeks and fourteen weeks which is the same as one and a half, two and a half and three and a half months. So this is a intramuscular injection combination and in, in this particular context you have a lot of discussion whether you should go for the painless injection so called or the regular injection. Now what is the difference between the two? The difference between the two is essentially in the whooping cough or the pertussis component. So what we colloquially call as a painless injection is actually the acellular component or acellular type of the pertussis vaccine and what we call as the painful or the regular vaccination is the whole cell derived pertussis component. So it's only different with respect to the uh, whooping cough component in these two vaccines. Essentially all these six components that we discussed are present in both of them. So what does it, this imply to the family? Now, if you were to sort of uh, discuss the advantages of uh, the, the regular or the, the so-called vaccine which has pain, it was believed traditionally or earlier that the regular vaccine was uh, believed to confer you know, longer and better efficacy of immunity. However, recent studies have actually shown that the immunity or the effectiveness of the vaccine is actually similar. Either you give the painless vaccine or the acellular component containing vaccine or the regular vaccine which has the whole cell purposes. There may be a safety advantage though with the acellular component containing vaccination wherein children may have a lower risk of high fever, excessive cry, persistent irritability and severe forms of allergic reactions. So especially if you have a child who is predisposed for seizures, say a child who has a neurological problem or a child who has had seizures as a newborn baby or a child who had some other kind of uh, structural problems with regard to the, the brain uh, or simply a baby who is preterm where you may have higher risk of complications or apneas induced because of pain with, with the, the regular whole cell derived component of the vaccine, we may as well resort to the acellular, acellular vaccination. So there is no hard and fast rule about it and the Indian Academy of Pediatrics recommends that either of these two vaccinations can be used with equal efficacy and safety profile. So the choice is with the family. There is of course a cost difference and the acellular uh, component containing vaccination is costlier than the whole cell derived pertussis containing vaccination. The other two important vaccinations which are also to be given along with this combination at 6, 10 and 14 weeks is one, the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine. The pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is a very important vaccination which prevents the commonest cause of infections overall in children which is pneumococcus. So pneumococcus is a bacteria which is responsible for infections in the lung, infections in the brain called meningitis and ear infections in children less than 5 years. It's the most common bacterial cause of infections in young children. This vaccination has been shown to be up to 85% effective in preventing infections due to pneumococcus and so whenever possible this vaccine, vaccination is to be given and is considered more and more a part of the, the kind of regular or compulsory vaccinations which every child should get. Now if the child has some high risk conditions which predispose the child to immunodeficiency there is another form of pneumococcal vaccination which is called as a polysaccharide vaccine which is uh, you know protective from more number of strains of pneumococcus although this can be only given at a later age beyond two years of age so the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine still remains the mainstay or the backbone of protection against pneumococcus which is the commonest bacteria responsible for infections 
middle ear chest and brain infections in young children which can be administered earlier in life and this is given as three doses in the primary schedule as i told you at 6 10 and 14 weeks along with the dpt combination vaccines this is again an intramuscular injection so essentially the child at 6 10 and 14 weeks receives two intramuscular injections one is a pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and the second one is the combination vaccine against diphtheria whooping cough tetanus h influenza hepatitis b and the injectable polio the last vaccine which is given in these three points of time is the rotaviral vaccination which prevents against rotaviral diarrheas one of the commonest viruses causing infective diarrheas in young children which is the rotavirus you have multiple different brands of rotaviral vaccine and all of them are available as oral doses and uh, you know you can go for any of these vaccinations there is also indian made rotaviral vaccination which is available so this is given as oral drops and given along with these two injections now remember that whenever oral vaccines are given it is preferable to give at least a gap of 20 to 30 minutes for giving feeding after the vaccination and with regards to you know the other general precautions of course you check with your doctor whether it is the right time for the vaccination make sure that the child is fed before the vaccination so that the child doesn't perceive too much pain and is not too irritable and uh, you know moving during the vaccination remain under observation for at least 30 minutes after the vaccination is administered preferably you can stay back in the hospital report immediately if there are any complications noticed such as refusal to feed for more than three to four hours decreased urine output or persistent high grade fever say lasting more than 24 hours post the vaccination always remember to carry your vaccination chart whenever you visit your doctor now to complete or move on with the list the next important set of vaccinations after we finish the 6 10 14 weeks vaccine comes at six months this is the viral flu or the influenza vaccination now influenza vaccination has gained a lot of momentum after we all went through the covid pandemic uh, because it was found that you know one of the commonest reasons for um, viral respiratory infections in children was influenza and in many many times many cases it was found that influenza infections were actually more severe than covid infections in children particularly in children now the quadrivalent flu vaccination which is now the kind of currently recommended type of flu vaccination is to be given as two doses in the first year the first dose at six months and the second dose is given at seven months previously uh, there was a smaller dose which was recommended for young children less than three years and a larger dose for children more than three years but now uniformly the same dose is recommended across age groups so irrespective of the age of the child a dose of 0.5 ml of flu vaccine is to be given at six and seven months and it is ideal to repeat flu vaccination yearly that is once in a year until the child reaches at least five years and more so when the child has immunosuppression that is decreased immunity or say a condition such as asthma which may predispose to repeated viral chest infections or if the child is visiting a daycare where the child may be at higher risk of viral infections so remember never ignore the flu vaccination because it can prevent not only dangerous forms of respiratory infections pneumonias but can substantially reduce morbidity school absenteeism because of repeated viral respiratory infections the other important vaccination that comes up at nine months is the mmr vaccination the measles mumps and rubella vaccination now obviously as the name implies there are three different diseases to which this vaccine confers immunity uh, we all have heard about measles and mumps these and as well as rubella these are viral you know exanthematous infections which means these are viral fevers which are typically associated with a type of rash now each of these fevers comes with a peculiar type of rash uh, the rash starts on a certain day after the fever begins etc but all these infections can be quite complicated and can substantially reduce the quality of life now measles particularly uh, reduces the child's immunity for a, quite a few weeks after the infection comes in and goes and rubella as we all know is one of the infections which when attacks pregnant mothers can lead to irreversible structural problems in the fetus or in the baby so it's very very preferable that 
the the adolescent girls are already immune you know to rubella vaccination and the best strategy is to give the rubella vaccination along with measles and mumps as the pediatric shed schedule does so the mmr vaccination starts from the age of 9 months and there are a couple of boosters which follow at the age of 1 at 15 months and one more subsequently at between 4 to 6 years that is at the time of school entry the other important vaccination which has a lot of uh, you know epidemiological impact especially in india is the typhoid vaccine it was previously believed that typhoid or enteric fever which is uh, you know a bacterial infection caused by salmonella typhi and typically spread by contaminated food and water and typically presents with fever abdominal pain and diarrhea and tiredness um, it was believed that this infection is rare in young children or children less than 1 year but studies from india have shown that even in infants less than 1 year typhoid is not an uncommon infection hence the IAP has actually pre-pawned pre the time of the typhoid vaccination to as early as 6 months. So any time starting from 6 months up to around 45-50 years the typhoid vaccination actually can be given. So we recommend a typhoid vaccination any time between 6 to 9 months of age. Again you have the newer typhoid uh, conjugate vaccine which is now available wherein a single dose of this vaccination is capable of giving lifelong immunity against typhoid infections last but not the least we have um, a couple of other vaccinations coming at one year of age that is at the time of the baby's first birthday one of them is the hepatitis a vaccination so we already had discussed about hepatitis b now hepatitis a is also a viral um, infection which can affect the liver and unlike hepatitis B, hepatitis A is transmitted similar to typhoid. So it's, it's an infection transmitted by contaminated food and water and is much more common in the community. Uh, a live viral vaccination for hepatitis A is now available which can be given as a single shot which is at one year of age. And once the live viral vaccination is given, a single dose is enough for lifelong immunity. There is also an option of a killed hepatitis A vaccination which is an attenuated or inactivated form of killed viral vaccination for hepatitis A. If that is being given then two doses are to be given at 12 months and at 18 months. There is also an optional vaccine which can be given at one year and this is the Japanese encephalitis vaccine. You may have heard of this virus. It is one of the most common cause of serious forms of brain infection. So it causes brain fever. Um, in young children and it is endemic in some parts of the country particularly in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar it is also found in some parts of South India now unfortunately there is no proper antiviral treatment available for Japanese encephalitis and it can actually lead to a lot of severe disabilities if it affects children and one of the complications is also death the Japanese encephalitis virus is recommended for all children residing in these endemic countries and for children who travel from other countries across to India. It is again given as a two-dose schedule at 12 months and at 13 months. So because we have a long list, exhaustive list of vaccinations, we have just discussed the vaccinations that are given in children less than one year in this video. Many times parents may sometimes forget to bring their baby vaccination chart when you, you know, visit your pediatrician. But uh, very important to not miss the pediatric vaccination chart when you visit your doctor so that the list of vaccines given can be updated and so that the date for the next review can be aptly marked on the chart. Remember that prevention is much better than cure. So never forget to follow the schedule as per the, the government as well as the Indian Academy of Pediatrics guidelines and do consult your pediatrician if you have any further queries. Thank you for watching this video and bye bye. Don't forget to like and share this video. For more such videos, do subscribe to the MFind channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update.